Hi, this is Rob Kelly, and this very short PowerPoint presentation is going to hopefully help describe how to use PACE effectively, that's persistent and continuous effort, and particularly around staying focused on uh, achieving your goal of thriving. So this is for someone who's been through the book, who's ready to apply themselves, any of the books in fact, and is ready to apply themselves now on a six or eight week program of getting themselves thriving, overcoming the symptoms and getting themselves thriving. I quite often describe it as a journey. So I quite often describe it as a journey from Cambridge down to London. This is my journey from Cambridge down to London and all I need to do if I want to get to London is just stay on the M11. I'm on this road, I'm on this track, it's a long road track, it's 70 miles, it's 80 miles, and all I've got to do is stay on this track and I will eventually reach my goal. You know, everything's going to be all right. I'm going to be thriving by the time I get to London. I've just got to reach London. So all I need to know is that I'm heading in the right direction and that I'm moving forward. It doesn't actually matter how fast I'm moving forward. If I'm utterly confident that I'm on the M11 and I'm heading south towards London, it is inevitable that sooner or later I'm going to get to London. Now, if I'm driving in a car, I'm going to get there in an hour. If I'm riding a push bike, it's going to take me four or five hours. If I'm walking, it might take me two or three days. If I'm crawling on my knees because I'm so slow, it might take me three weeks or even three months. But it doesn't matter because if you're confident in the knowledge that you are going to get there, What's three weeks if, if I've had my issues and my problems for 30 or 40 years? Most of our clients and trainees don't mind the fact it's going to take them six weeks, eight weeks, or even three months to get where they want to be. This is the next slide then with the rest of the clutter taken out. All I've got to do is get on the M11 at Cambridge and travel south going down towards London. And I've just got to keep moving in that forward direction. Keep moving forward. It doesn't matter that my progress is slow. Anyone going through the Thrive program really only needs to improve, I don't know, one or two percent per day. That's all. They don't have to make huge inroads. They don't make the, need to make huge leaps going through this. They don't need to see magnificent, gigantic changes every single day. Small changes. Persistent, continuous effort. Okay, I'm not trying to achieve massive things in a day. That's actually counterproductive because having major changes can be a little bit unsettling. Small, understandable changes every day because I'm putting an effort and I'm recognising where I'm changing. Today I'm going to put particular effort in to manage my catastrophizing and when I do that I realise at the end of the day I've been catastrophizing less, I feel a little bit better. It's absolutely predictable how I'm achieving success. Whether I'm zooming from Cambridge to London or whether I'm travelling quite sedately down there, doesn't matter. I'm confident that this is what's going to get me through so I'm relaxed and I'm calm knowing that uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Now this is a particularly good metaphor for people with um, severe anxieties they want to come overcome, particularly things like uh, chronic anxieties, chronic illnesses, emetophobia, ME, anorexia, people that are very, very low in self-esteem, etc, etc. Because what you can do, if you look at the diagram in front of you, you'll realise that, yes, all I've got to do is stay on this road, this trip from, from Cambridge down to London, but there are various little offshoot little roads that I might end up going down by mistake. One thing that Lisa, the ex-emetophobe, did incredibly well, and, and really what made her as successful as she could be, overcoming emetophobia and alcoholism in just four and a half days, what she did, she didn't want to wake up in the morning, assume she's thriving, and then only really think about it at two o'clock in the afternoon. Think, oh God, I'm not thriving, I'm, I'm not being positive, where's my list? I'm being catastrophic, I'm being negative. Because then she's had five or six hours that day already going off on a complete tangent. And then, of course, you can overreact, oh no, I've gone and blown it. 
I've gone miles off my journey, miles off my route. I've come miles downhill. My self-esteem has taken a big hit. Well, how do you avoid those things? Well, what Lisa did was made sure she was never more than 20 minutes or half an hour off her journey. So, in fact, one of the days she stayed with me on our boot camp, she set the alarm on her phone, the countdown timer, for every half an hour. So every 30 minutes, her countdown timer on her iPhone would bleep or buzz in her pocket. It's just a reminder as if to say, check your thinking. How's your thinking right now? How's your thriving right now? How are you doing right now? And this is feeling positive and buoyant and doing really well. She would just pat her pocket and carry on. If she wasn't, and she felt either a little bit negative, or she's worrying, or she's blowing something up, she'd realise that the maximum she could have gone off track is only half an hour. She could have only gone off on one of these little side roads a tiny little bit, a few hundred yards maybe, maybe a mile or two. Well, that's not really that catastrophic, is it? If you go off on a tangent, if you go off, go off your journey, go off your route by just a mile or two, that's not a huge big deal. They're quite difficult to catastrophize that or have a major blip about that. Oh my God, I've gone 300 yards in the wrong direction. So getting people to check their thinking throughout the day, particularly if, if I set myself up when I'm in Cambridge, I start off that morning, I get my post-it note out, or I write my postcard and put it by the side of my bed. What sort of day do I want today? What sort of day am I going to have today? Bang there, as soon as you wake up in the morning, seven o'clock, half past seven, what sort of day do I want? I've already setting out my store. I'm getting myself on track. I'm saying, right, what I'm gonna to do today, I'm gonna to go from Cambridge to London. That's what I'm gonna to do today, that is my goal. Or from Cambridge, five miles towards London, or 200 yards towards London. I'm setting out my goal for the day, and already, therefore, I'm thinking positive, I'm being proactive, I'm managing my thinking, I'm challenging my desire for control. All the important tenets of the Thrive Programme, I'm doing that already. And then if my little buzzer goes off in my pocket at 8 o'clock, I can just check where I am. Just checking that I'm on track, I'm on route, I haven't gone off on a side road. Yeah, I'm heading the right direction. Well done, Rob. Keep going. And then just keep doing that throughout the day and keep checking maybe every hour, maybe every two hours. If you're doing really well, start every half an hour, then cut it down to every two hours or three hours or four hours or a couple of times during the day. And it's a really good confidence booster. It's a really good metaphor, particularly for, uh, let's call them clients with uh, quite um, intricate um, non-thriving issues. That is to say, they've got lots of different thinking styles. They've got lots of unhelpful beliefs. They're doing lots of things that are preventing themselves from thriving. And it's sometimes difficult to keep track of all those things. Well, of course you don't need to. All you need to do is ask yourself that best question I wrote in the Thrive book. The thought that's in my mind right now, is it helpful? If it's not, change it or bin it. And that's a really good thing you can do every 20 minutes, every half an hour, every hour of the day, or even every 10 minutes if you're in a particularly bad way. And you can do it every 10 minutes. The thoughts that are in my mind right now, are they helpful? Or have I gone off, uh, off the map a little bit? It's easy to get back on the map if you've only been off it for 10 minutes or 20 minutes or half an hour. And this, uh, I've done this with a few people. I talked about this in New York uh, last weekend. And it's a real confidence boost in knowing that I'm still on my journey. I'm still on my map. I haven't blown anything. I haven't gone wildly off on a tangent. I'm doing well. I'm on my journey. All right, I may have only come a little bit further forward. But that doesn't matter. If I'm getting over issues and problems and the lack of thriving for 30 years, I don't mind it taking three weeks. I don't mind it taking six weeks. As long as I can see that I'm moving forward and it's predictable what I'm doing and the results are predictable and it's predictable I'm going to get to my goal at the end of it, then I'm relaxed and I'm not going to catastrophize the journey. Thanks very much.